being an addict is like being in torment. It takes the life out of you. You wake up in the morning, all you can think of is getting the next fix. And what you do to get that is you'll steal. You'll sleep with people that you normally wouldn't. It makes you do things you would never do. But you just don't see a way out, you know? The streets at times can be more attractive than the drugs. You're just running around, no accountability, no responsibility. It makes it easier to live with yourself. It makes it easier for you to do what you're doing. There's a reason that I started doing drugs. Um, when I was nine years old, my mom left me with a, a sick man. And he stole my innocence that night. He told me that if I told, that he'd kill me. And my brother and sister were there, and they were little. And he made me do things that were... just fell. And he stripped me. He stripped me of my childhood. About two years later, I started um, experimenting with drugs, marijuana. Um, sometimes I would steal my mom's um, crank that she had out. I loved it. It was like instantaneous. It was a, an escape, you know? It was um, a way out of it. It made me feel it made all that stuff go away. So from a very young age, I started. I lived homeless at different periods of our life. I mean, when I was young, we, me and my mom would go from park to park. She had lots of friends, so we would kind of go house to house. And she'd manage to get a house, and it wasn't long we were there. I mean, we'd be kicked out again, and back, it was just um, unstable. When I was 18, actually, I got pregnant with my oldest son. I went ahead and decided to keep the baby, but I continued in my addiction. I was shooting drugs um, the whole pregnancy. I wasn't a fit mom, so he went to live with his dad. Soon after that, I met Matt. He was into uh, dealing meth and manufacturing it, and uh, he was 100% uh, dysfunctional. I used drugs for over 36 years of my life, and, it, and I didn't believe I could live without drugs. Uh, I couldn't get up in the morning. I couldn't go leave the house. I couldn't do anything. And when I didn't have them, I was sick. We cleaned up for a little bit, and I had a second son. But it wasn't long, we fell, and this time it was the worst it had ever been. Sleeping wherever we could, um, in the cold, in cars, in sheds. When Jen and I were homeless, it was, um, it was, it was so hopeless out there. And, um, you know, we, we had a, our baby and um, we didn't have any way to um, provide for him. We had no place to sleep, we actually had to, uh, uh, digging uh, dumpsters and try to find unopened food and stuff to feed him when he'd wake up in the morning. I couldn't believe what I'd become. I dragged my son through hell. He was exposed to things he shouldn't have. He knew too much for a little boy. He got real sick and I looked and his little head looked like it was two, two or three times too big for his body. I had tried and tried, and I went through program after program. And every time that I tried and I failed, it got all that harder. And each time, it eventually took it to where I didn't want to try anymore. I just wanted to give up. So I went out, and I got some heroin and some crank, and I, I mixed a speedball. And um, I did a big shot. and. It took my breath. I turned blue and I felt, I felt like I was tired. And I laid down. 
And then the next thing you know, I was totally gone. But in that moment, I could actually hear everything going on around me. And I could hear people saying, come on, come on, let's go. She's going to die. She's going to die. They all left me there. And then in that moment, I knew that I was going to die. And I cried out to God in my desperate condition. And I just asked him if he would spare me. I could feel the darkness coming in when I was laying there. I don't know how to explain it, but I knew that where I was going to go. And I asked God to help me, to give me a chance to live for him, that I didn't want to die like that. And I don't know how, but I woke up in a hospital. From that point on, I just, that was, I, I knew it was God. I knew it was. And I wanted to do whatever I could to show him my gratitude. I haven't seen my mom in a year, and uh, I don't know what I'm going to find. I don't know what I'm pulling up to. I don't know what to expect. I haven't seen her for a year because I had to let her go. I have to protect my children and, and my family um, from that type of lifestyle. I don't want it coming in, it, it, trying to get back in my life in any way. When my mother um, got a hold of me last night, she said that she was cold and there was rats. I told her that it breaks my heart to see her like that. There's some stuff. Thanks. So how did you get through last night? Um, I just covered up. I wore warm clothes and covered up. And me and the dog was fine. Why, were you stressed? Yeah. Why? Because I worry about you. Well, don't. OK? Let me do the worrying. I'm going to be taking that role here soon. OK? I love you. It'll be fine. I want you to get out of here. I just want my mom back. My, my kids want their grandma. I'm going to get clean. There's no two ways about it. And it's not because if you could do it, I could do it. It's because I want to do it. And I've seen what you've done with it. Right now, <laughs> I'm straight, but I'm not going to be here in a minute, you know, uh, and I'm going to be honest with you, and uh, I'm, I'm going to get high, and, and, and I'm going to go do what I got to do. It gives you energy, too. It's not your friend, that's what it's not. It's not a friend. It's definitely a, a devil's drug. Because it wipes you from everything. Just this little pipe right here. It's taking everything away from me. But I'm getting a chance to get it back, so I'm going to take that chance. And I'm going to put this down and walk a good life with my kids. That's what I'm going to do. I feel like I got 100 pounds on my shoulders. This is the lifestyle I used to live. Same setting, everything. Mom? Hey, how you doing? Behind me, that's the caddy shack, and that's where everybody uh, goes and gets high. They do everything from heroin to, 
to crack to uh, meth. And if you need something, come to the Caddy Shack. <laughs> we all live off the Caddy Shack. Way it takes the ease. It helps them survive and, and deal every day. This place is rock bottom. Most of the youngsters are going to get caught up in drugs and it's just hard to get out, you know? I've been there. I know what it feels like, and they don't even realize it. Right now we're on our way to Royce, Royce's house and uh, he was a wonderful man uh, to us. He was such an instrument. Um, he showed us the true love of uh, Jesus Christ. He didn't care what conditions we were in. He came out and brought us food and gave Matt work. And Hello. Uh, Royce? Yes, I, I just went past the... Um, the high school and all that, did I miss it? I, I, I believe I'm on Frontage Road. Well, Jenna, after you pass Faith Christian High School, is the very first driveway. This is going to be the first time that I've seen him in two years. I'm pretty excited. <laughs> Give me a hug. <laughs> good to see you. Uh, good to see you too. <laughs> yeah. Where's that man? Oh, he's at, he's working right Is now. Is he? Yeah. He's working at our church over kids. there. I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, for reflecting the love of Christ into my family. It really meant a great deal to us. Most people, when you're that load, don't treat you like that. And I just wanted to tell you thank you and I love you. So God sent people like Royce Dunn and, and uh, Joan um, to uh, open our eyes and uh, to love us and show us the character of Christ. And they come out in the, the worst conditions and the darkest places and it doesn't matter. And their reward is seeing a life transformed, a family restored. God put his hands down in the bottom of the barrel and he pulled me out and he saved me. And through that he saved my children and my husband. And uh, he gave us Joan as our mom. And. Uh, when you have someone like that on your side um, fighting for you, <laughs> it's like you have the mom that you always dreamed of. For years I did things in my own strength and finally somebody stepped in and had the courage to teach me to, that God's real and He's alive and that He'll supply all of our needs. Life with my family is beautiful. I wake up in the morning and my babies are all around me. I knew I never needed to learn how to live. I didn't know anything except drugs and I had to be broken down and, and taught um, how to put God first. If He can redeem us, He can redeem anybody. He gave us a reason to live.